I'm really enjoying my telecollaborative class. Yes, it is a great experience to participate in exchange of ideas with people from other countries. We can learn so much from them about their cultures. But I am really worried about the assessment. How do you think we will be assessed? I think the topic of today's class is assessment into like collaboration, so we will find out. Shall we go? I really wish I could attend it. Unfortunately, I have a doctor's appointment at 3 p.m. Can you please brief me later? Sure, no problem. Good morning, class. I hope you had a good weekend and are ready to start exploring a new topic. Today we will talk about assessment into like collaboration. Can somebody tell me what assessment is according to the literature you were asked to read? According to Wall et al. 2014, assessment is a group of activities and tasks that seek to gather systematic evidence to determine the worth and value of things in an educational system. It is also viewed as the method through which instructors and institutions determine the extent to which the desired outcomes are met. Von et al. 2013 claim that assessment very much shapes the quality of learning and the quality of teaching. They argue that because students care only about what is rewarded, instructors should make sure to encourage deeper engagement with the activities through rewarding them. Great answer. Well done. I would add that assessment, together with project structure, research versus pedagogical agenda and ambiguous role of an instructor as a participant, has been identified as one of challenges which instructors experience in an international collaboration, according to Basharina, Gardado and Morgan, 2008. Moreover, as Conrad and Opino, 2018, state, in an online context, there is a fertile ground for the creation of authentic assessment due to the many affordances of different platforms and educational tools. Conrad and Opino, 2018, and O'Dowd, 2010, suggest some questions that instructors and course designers address, such as What do teachers want learners to know? What should be assessed? What should be discussed? What instruments should be used for assessment? When should assessment take place? How will students be prepared for upcoming assessment? What kind of feedback should students be provided with? What do teachers assess in an online activity? Should the level of participation be assessed? Should teachers assess the student's interaction? Should electronic literacy be assessed? How are the intercultural exchanges assessed? Who can tell me how assessment should be aligned with projects or course objectives? This quintessential question was raised by O'Dowd, 2010, in relation to Web 2.0 contexts. He argues that if students are engaged in such contexts to achieve specific objectives, then assessment should reflect these aims as well. Existing literature, such as Levy and Stockwell 2006, Salmon 2000, and O'Dowd 2010, mention that although online contexts integrate Web 2.0 activities, assessment does not differ much from the traditional norm. They suggest that assessment should give some space to new virtual contexts and integrate online forms to bridge the gap between how students learn and how they are assessed. Good answer. Also Salmon, 2000, points out how some students find it ironic to spend a lot of time in front of the computer throughout the course, but having to sit their exams in a very traditional way with no integration of online tools. Biggs, 1999, suggests a framework that recommends aligning assessment with online teaching approaches. Learning outcomes, assessment, teaching methods and activities should align together. Similarly Birum, 2008, argues that what is not tested is not taught, and online educators now, as O'Dowd, 2010, puts it find themselves with the challenge of developing effective and comprehensive models for assessing online foreign language activity which take into account the skills attitudes and literacies which we claim to be teaching in our classes. When it comes to types of assessment, how assessment tools are categorized? They are categorized according to their purpose into formative and summative. According to Conrad and Opino, 2018, these two categories differ from each other in different things such as grading, purpose, focus and effort. Well done again. Let's start with formative assessment. According to Conrad and Opino, 2018, Formative assessment is generally viewed as interaction and feedback that is ongoing and that contributes to learning expertise. Ellis, 2003, divides it into planned and incidental. Planned formative assessment tests directly learners' language knowledge and or the ability to do particular tasks. 
A rating scale which is frequently used assesses progress and compares learners to each other. On the other hand, incidental formative assessment happens during instructional conversations that teachers and students might have while doing regular pedagogical activity in a classroom. Incidental formative assessment is further divided in the same source into internal and external. In internal formative assessment, learners are given ongoing online feedback on their performance which contributes directly to the completion of a specific task as well as indirectly to language development. Incidental internal formative assessment aids learners in constructing the target standards they need to achieve and comparing their actual performance with the desired performance. External incidental formative assessment, on the other hand, entails both teacher and student reflection on learner performance either during an activity or after its completion. Conrad and Opino, 2018, point out how good feedback facilitates self-assessment and reflection, encourages positive motivational beliefs and self-esteem, provides opportunities to close the gap between current and desired performance, and can be used by instructors to help shape teaching. On the other hand, citing from the same source, Summative assessment is understood as the graded step that takes place at critical designated points in the learning process. Summative assessment is frequently contrasted with formative assessment. The former evaluates performance either at the end or the beginning of a unit of study, and it is generally assumed that it reflects the end result of the learning process. However, Painter and Lintloff, 2005, criticized this approach by claiming that even the assessment conducted at the end of a course can be forward-looking. Taking the future out of the picture creates an assessment context that is not interested in promoting further development. Okay, let's take a short break and when we come back, it is time for your presentations. Where is Jessica? She was supposed to present today. She has a doctor's appointment today. She might be late for the class. Okay, we will see after the break. Oh, hi Jessica. I am glad you've made it to class after all. Are you ready for your presentation? I think so. Great, then let's start. So, today's topic is assessment in telecollaborative projects, and I would like to talk about existing assessment approaches. Vlodkowski, 2008, suggests making assessment a partner of continuous learning rather than a means for assigning grades. According to the same source, assessing students should become essential learning activities that motivate students to put time and effort into doing them. As stated by Conrad and Apino, 2018, existing assessment approaches such as e-portfolios, journals, group work, etc. provide the chance for authentic learning and assessment. Let's start with ePortfolio. According to Pinraid and Apino, 2018, ePortfolio, also known as Digital Portfolios, is a collection of artifacts accumulated and collected by students to demonstrate what has been learned in a specific area. Several sources, including Salmon, 2000, Tolsby, 2002, and Kinraid and Apino, 2018, mention ePortfolio as a learning and assessment tool that appeals to the digital native learners because of its organic, colorful, modern, and exciting format. Salmon, 2000, finds out that among the affordances of online learning appear the chances for deeper engagement of the students in the assessment process. Networking offers the opportunity for making students' writing easily accessible and available for assessment. Furthermore, Conrad and Apino, 2018, argue that No better way exists to exercise authenticity in assessment than by portfolio. It is a comprehensive approach to encourage students to demonstrate what they have learned from their intercultural contact and to reflect on their experiences, as stated by O'Dowd, 2010. Moreover, Conrad and Apino, 2018, call ePortfolio an authentic vehicle to demonstrate what has been learnt. It allows learners to gather, accumulate, build on, and reflect on their learning process over a period of time through sustained engagement with the program. Thank you, Jessica. Colin, now it is your turn to talk about rubrics and journals. 
Actually, my part of the presentation will cover not only rubrics and journals, but also self-assessment and peer assessment. So let me start with rubrics. O'Dowd, 2010, discusses using rubrics as another common online assessment approach. He argues that rubrics should not be fuzzy to give grades to students according to the level of task completion and the quality of the student's contribution to the tasks whether partially or thoroughly. Could you explain what you mean by fuzzy? As we read in O'Dowd, 2010, to like elaboration 2.0 tasks often entail different interrelated subtasks that use various online activities and tools. Therefore, descriptors should bring the subtasks together and assess them as the task taken as a whole. This, however, also poses a certain problem for educators. Let's take for example a rubric that assigns marks to students based on two criteria. A. Whether all parts of the task were completed and B. Quality of their participation in the forums. An example of rubrics mentioned by O'Dowd in the same source includes descriptors such as thoughtfully analyzed the interactivity of an educational website, or partially analyzed. Such terms are described by Sadler 1987, as fuzzy descriptors, since they use relative terms, thoughtfully, partially, etc., and will be interpreted differently by different educators. Well explained. Continue, please. The next point I would like to discuss is journals. According to Conrad and Opino, 2018, learning journals are being both loved and disdained by learners and teachers alike. Like ePortfolios, journals allow learners to reflect on their learning process throughout the course with the chance to exchange what is accumulated with other learners and instructors. Journals allow for a deeper engagement and connection with the learner's own lives, learning and experiences. Furthermore, the same source claims that learning journals allow for a broad range of reflective material. Students can be instructed to follow a theme or a topic throughout the course, or to be more effective, learners may be given free reign to create their own repository of reflections. Let me move on to self and peer assessment. According to Fenwick and Parson, 2009, cited in Conrad and Opino, 2018, Online self-assessment can be understood as the act of identifying standards or criteria and applying them to one's own work, and then making judgment as to whether, or how well, you have met them. Conrad and Opino, 2018, claim that when planned appropriately and conducted properly, self-assessment can promote critical reflection. Nevertheless, many learners are not motivated to engage in self-assessment reporting that it makes them nervous and uncomfortable. The same source suggests that this issue can be addressed either by training students for self-assessment or by using it as a learning tool rather than an assessing one. According to Conrad and Opino, 2018, peer assessment is one of the oldest and most commonly applied assessment technique in online contexts. Learners, in an online context, may engage in peer assessment tasks where they can either agree on the scale point as mentioned by Birum, 2008, or review each other's written work even when this written work has to be handed it to the teachers at a later stage, as stated by Salmon, 2000. Well done, Colin. That's it for today. Have a good one. This was a very interesting class. Good job on your presentation. Right back at ya. What we haven't mentioned is that existing literature discusses a few issues that educators should consider when designing online assessment. Like what? Well, according to O'Dowd, 2010, assessing competencies and literacies can be challenging pedagogically and ethically due to the lack of assessment tools used by instructors. He also argues that determining what to assess in an online context is problematic. Learners taking part in an online exchange are often expected not only to interact, but also to do so in a specific manner which involves taking into account the contributions of others and developing dialogic exchange. Ah, uh, yeah. I've read in the same source that educators give a great importance to addressing intercultural communicative competence. However, it is relatively difficult to assess this competence effectively. Can Raid and Apino, 2018, mention that assessing individual groups' members can be an issue as well? Assigning a group grade without regarding individual differences can be both unfair and deleterious to the learning process. It might even be considered illegal in some cases. 
I agree with Conrad and Opino, who cited Roberts and McHenry, 2007, and stated that assessment should be designed in a way that would consider students' ability to interact, collaborate, think critically, and cooperate with other learners. Yes, you are right. These are all issues that need to be considered. I'm sorry, but it's getting really late. I'll have to leave, or I'll miss my last bus home. It's okay, I understand. It was great seeing you. Thanks for a very fruitful discussion. See you soon. Thank you. 